Hello everybody, today I was going to talk about the climate of the entire planet. This is quite a big project, um, there's quite a lot to discuss, um, basically North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and the poles um, too, so I uh, wanted to get into all the details. So perhaps some of the most important climate in all the world is here in East Africa, uh, at least on land. Um, in addition to land, we're also looking at the ocean here, which is like Southeast Asia, this triangle area, uh, as well as the Caribbean. And you'll notice that the Caribbean is connected to South America, which is connected to the jungle, the Amazon jungle here. In North America, the climate is pretty stable. You can see there's a lot of this green area here, and it's pretty much not very complicated except for up in the mountainous areas. In a lot of ways, Asia actually might be um, about as complicated as the United States, uh, with the exception of India um, and Southeast Asia here. And to a lot of extent, Europe is warmer than North America, um, so the climate here is going to be a little bit different to look at. Here's the average annual temperature maps. You can see the yellow areas are kind of like California temperatures, um, and you can see a lot of the areas are kind of like in their 70s or 60s um, in this yellow region. Now the jungle is typically in the 80s or 90s, so the temperatures there are a lot, on average a lot hotter. You'll see it here in South America very hot, uh, very hot also in Africa and then Southeast Asia. I want to take you through the lighting maps really quick. I've been seeing these for about a couple years now. There's quite a lot of data here. You can see that basically um, I added in the major regions. So you basically have the major region of North America, South America, Africa, and then Southeast Asia. You can kind of see some of the details for just North America here. You may be a little surprised um, at the shift of this lightning. There's actually quite a lot of lightning along uh, northern Aust northwestern Australia, as well as Southeast Asia, or particularly Malaysia and Java here. And then there's also little slivers of a lot of lightning up in Bangladesh uh, as well. But you might take a careful look at this map in particular to see details. Here is the lightning density map um, for the United States. You can see some interesting patterns, particularly down into Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. I circle some of those regions. You can see there's basically three main regions in the south here, and three main regions in the north. And this lightning does come in from quite far away. Now, I'm not sure how accurate this lightning is above the ocean front, but it definitely shows quite a lot of lightning coming in from the ocean here. Some places that I was particularly surprised are, I was along the Red Sea here. You can see in uh, off of Saudi Arabia, that was an interesting lightning region. But you can basically divide it up into three major regions here in North and South America, Africa and Europe, and then Southeast Asia. So I'm going to go through all the weather maps um, for the year really quickly here. So you can see January, February, March, April, May. And you can see that in, during each month there's kind of some different areas that really start to show up. Here you start seeing Bangladesh. Now you see the whole coast along the Southeast Asia, as well as India, really getting a lot of rain there. And last December. I want to show you one quick little thing, interesting point. You now you see it's uh, basically on the east side of the island here, or the east side of the Philippines. But when you switch it to the 6th in July, it'll be the opposite side. So now it's on this side, the west side. So we go through this one more time just to look at the details. 
So you can see um, there's some surprising areas in Africa that you might not anticipate having interesting climate. Uh, one of those is right here, kind of in the Nigerian Delta. Another one is right here, kind of along uh, just south of Senegal. But the climate is very complex in East Africa because there's more mountains here. So you basically see that up in Ethiopia, along the, the lake here, in Lake Victoria, in Uganda, and then all the way down to Tanzania. And I probably should have circled Madagascar because that's very complex there as well. However, when you add the ocean into the picture, you get two or even three times or even ten times more complex because you basically have a lot of this ocean area right here in the Philippines particularly. South America is really awesome because it includes some very high mountains right up nestled up against the ocean front. For example, Cal all California and the Andes Mountains have huge mountain ranges right up into the ocean as well as into the jungle. So what you see here is this green area which is high mountains and then the basically the red is jungle area. You see some of that in Eastern Africa but not nearly as much as what you see because this is just a huge long area with lots more jungle areas. It's important to point out Dominican Republic how complex it is. Right here you can start to see some of that. This is basically got the ocean front as well as mountains. Some of this also happens in Papua New Guinea, but you can see it's much more hotter in Papua New Guinea. There's all kinds of details list here. You can see Taiwan is up here with quite a variety of climates, as well as northern part of Philippines into Manila. It has some kind of areas that aren't as hot and, and wet, as well as this island. It's really important to note the soil for the whole entire planet as well, because sometimes the climate, if, if the soil is different, and the climate is the same, you might feel like you're still kind of in a different area. But here you notice in Thailand, a lot of that soil is very similar actually to the soil right here on the tip and actually the climate map shows similar uh, information as well. So what I'm trying to say here is that this soil is basically the same, both in this jungle part of the jungle and this part of the jungle and as well as this, this soil right here. But this soil is not the same, so this soil is different than this soil. So basically, the Amazon does have quite a different feel because the soil actually looks different. And it's also a good indicator of how vastly different the climates can be. For example, in East Africa, you can see that this is the most complex soil in the world. Um, and it's partly due to the different types of climate as well as different types of geography in the area. So believe it or not, we've just covered the climate for the entire planet. Um, that's a, quite a big topic. Um, there's lots of different things, including soil and different types of weather maps uh, that definitely uh, can come into play. Uh, so <coughs> I'll just go circle around the planet here so you can see what the whole entire thing looks like. Now, again, what I would say is that if you're really studying the climate, you really want to look at Southeast Asia. This whole triangle area is very, very important for the climate. And then you can see kind of the coastal regions of most of the Earth, as well as the polar regions can be pretty interesting as well. I wanted to show you one last little detail about the entire planet is that it should make sense to you how the weather works and how the climate works. Um, there are different zones. Um, at 30 degrees, basically, you have a dry area here. Um, and a lot of that is because the uh, cloud, the, the westerlies pull away from the, uh, the 30 degree angles here. So, so this is zero degrees to the equator. This is 30 degrees in or 60 degrees and 90 degrees on the poles. Right, and so each one of these have different weather patterns. There are polar easterlies, and then there's westerlies, right? And then there's trade winds that run down the, the equator. So you can see how that all works. So here's a live weather map, and you see how this, this is the uh, westerlies are kind of pulling in here. And that's these winds right here. You can see basically the westerlies pulling right down. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the study of the planet. Let me know what ideas you have. Thank you so much.